Menopause for me has actually been very liberating. And if other people are thinking, oh, oh, she's turning red. Her neck's going red. Oh, this is really embarrassing. Fuck off, it's not embarrassing. This is me having my menopause. Deal with it. So how do you feel about doing this? I mean, all my life, the way I've lived my life, I've always put myself out of my comfort zone. So I'm kind of comfortable being out of my comfort zone. It might be because I'm 60 and I'm kind of almost through the menopause and I just think, you know what? I haven't got that much longer left here. Fuck, I've got to make every single second count. So can you talk about what your style says about you? My style is kind of how do I feel when I wake up in the morning? Like the other night I was asked by somebody who I've met on Instagram to go to a gallery and I desperately wanted to go, but I don't have cocktail dresses. I don't have little black sense. frocks. I don't have anything black in my wardrobe. I didn't have sensible shoes. And when he said, oh, you, you know, you can't wear sneakers or moccasins, that's all I've got. And I felt really, really sad that because it's a gallery, everyone had to wear black and pretend to drink champagne. I don't drink, so, you know, like you have to... Uh, I won't do it. I'm not prepared to compromise to that extent. So my style is just my clothes that are in my closet that I've kept gathered over the years. It's not my style, it's me. I'm a twin, I was born a twin. So it doesn't skip a generation because I have twins. And my mother had preeclampsia. I had eclampsia as well, but it kind of went further. Preeclampsia is when your body can't handle the stress of the pregnancy and your toxins, you can't release your toxins and you go into sort of like toxic shock. I was apparently a very difficult delivery and the other one, when I was born, I, and I was told this from a very, very young age, so I've always carried this. So my twin, she was dead, obviously she died in utero, and she was, she was born two, one and a half days after me. My mother never, we never spoke about it, Nobody ever, nobody's ever spoken about it, and now it's too fucking late to speak about it. This was the first time this has ever happened. But I don't blame her for that, that's just the way it was, that's what the way it was in the, with that generation, I don't think right. they talked about stuff. That's always been my protection, and it's always been my weight, my fault and my burden, but also my joy. And that's, I think, why I'm very single and very alone, not alone in a bad way, but I'm very strong within myself because I feel as though I've taken on for her. And I can't word it, I can't express it. I can just know that she's with me. And I've fucking got to just do what for, for both of us. You know, I've really, really got to just do it, whatever it is. Can you talk about um, assumptions that people have about you based on your style? I think that people assume that I'm a complete ditz. I think that they think that I'm totally chaotic, totally disorganized, and I'm so not. I've been a single parent of twins, and for seven years I ran my business. They don't understand why I don't have manicures and do all the stuff that a lot of people, you know, I don't shave my lip, well, occasionally I do, but I don't do any of that stuff. All my life, I've been a fighter, uh, and I will be until the fucking day I die, and then I'll just, huh. But I kind of almost welcome the aging process, the fact that I'm losing my hearing. Because that world, the Western world in particular, I find it really harsh. You're I'm right. having trouble with the crassness. I'm having trouble with the lack of communication. There's no time for people to communicate. People don't make eye contact. Because I'm an alien in this world, I don't have those, I don't understand the rules. And so I'm looking at people and, and, and I think they're so surprised that this old woman is fucking looking at you. And then, they, and then I'll, I'll smile and they'll, you can see they don't necessarily smile, but or they'll go, you know, nice kicks. Or, What's the biggest risk you've ever taken? The biggest risk? Oh my gosh. The choice to become pregnant. I was determined to take them to full term. I didn't want to have to bottle feed them and I wanted to be the wonderful earth mother and do all the stuff. I mean, I had like a 54 inch waistline and I couldn't walk. When they were born, the first, the first one was forceps and the second one was breech and there was half an hour. They've got different birthdays. They were born half an hour over, mid, over midnight. I was lying there and I, I had this headache 
painful. It was more painful than the birthing and all of that. I remember saying to the nurse, can I have something for my headache? And I don't remember anything then for about three days. And apparently what happened was I started fitting and I had eclamptic fits and I was out of it for like three days. So I, I was never able to breastfeed my babies. I truly, truly believe that the universe throws at you what you can just cope with. And in the process of learning how to cope with it and coping with it, that's how you grow. And if you, fr if you hide away from that rock that the universe throws at you, it will just throw it to you again in a different form. So can you elaborate a little bit more on um, what you were going through, on menopause and like what that process was oh. for you? It's something that people use when they want to insult you. They say, oh, you must be going through menopause. Fuck off. That's what's good about menopause, because you can actually say it. Before that, you're too polite and you're too brainwashed. Menopause for me has actually been very liberating, because it's not something that I wanted to hide behind. It's not something that I was ashamed of or embarrassed about or whatever. And if other people are thinking, oh, oh, she's turning red. Her neck's going red. Oh, this is really embarrassing. Fuck off, it's not embarrassing. This is me having my menopause. Deal with it. If I'm embarrassing, I'm sorry. Actually, I'm not. Go away. That's menopause. I think you have to decide, do you want to embrace it and go with it? And then it becomes a strengthening bodicea, you know, like here I am, I'm warrior queen, I'm having a menopause moment. Or, oh, I'm, oh I've got to take my pill because I'm... The doctors put me on HRT for like a week. And if I thought that Those I felt... Hormones. Yes, hormone replacement therapy. And if I felt like there was an alien in my body when menopause hit, there was a whole fucking war world of aliens in my body when, they, when, they, when I took this HRT. It was like, what, the, what is going on with my body? So I threw, I, I just, I mean, what is the benefit in skipping over anything? You don't learn the lesson. You don't age gracefully. You're it's not right. accepting and you're not you. You're just this weird, morphic Unnatural. thing that's not, you. I mean, well, maybe, I don't know. I don't know because, I, I mean, that's also alien to me that maybe I'm the alien. I don't know. I don't know, but so for me, menopause, yes, I had hot flushes, I was sweating, you go all pink and red and greasy and sweaty and oh my God, and you don't care what people think. And I was, and my poor children, my poor husband, but I'd say, you know what, it's your problem. No, I don't want to have sex. I'm really, really sorry, but actually, it's fucking painful. I'm not doing it anymore. It's like a pair of scissors cutting up into your bloody birth canal. But you know what? That has freed me up. I can have relationships with people that are honest and now I can make decisions for myself and they're not driven by my, well they are driven by my hormones, they're driven by a different set of hormones which is I think what the elders in a decent community, those are the hormones that the elders are driven by. And hopefully I am going to become a bit more caring and hopefully I am going to have grandchildren. Hopefully my body and my life and my aging process is going to be more gentle more fluid. It's enabling me to sit back, not feel as though I have to conquer the world and run this huge mega business and because I've done it and I don't really need to prove myself to anybody anymore. Your relationship with your mother? Yes. How has it affected you? I've never ever been able to ask for help. Ever. Because I've never known, I mean my parents now laugh because apparently when I was little I Wrote, wrote to them and said, we're having a school swimming carnival. Will you come to the school swimming carnival and watch me swim? And I don't remember this, but apparently they turned up and there were no other parents there. And they just laugh, hilarious. Oh, she told us that there was a swimming carnival and we had to go and there was nobody there and la la la. And I guess that I must have wanted to see them or done something to invent this swimming carnival. But it's always been laughed at. And I think I just, I've never really therefore asked them or anybody for anything ever again, ever. And even when I had my kids, I never asked for help. I just did it on my own. And, and so I suppose my relationship with my mother has made me fiercely independent. When do you feel the most vulnerable? I haven't learned how to be vulnerable. I haven't learned that lesson yet. When do you feel the most beautiful? Beauty is, is a feeling and, um, and it's a freedom. I can remember one time when I was in India, we were on a bus and this young, Rajasthani couple got onto the bus and they were just so proud and so beautiful and wearing the most amazing vibrant colors and such poise and I sat there on the bus and I felt beautiful. 
We were free. We were on this bus. Oh. What do you love the most about your body? My ledge. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, my ledge is because I had twins um, for like probably two years. I constantly had a child on this hip and this ledge developed. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I love the most about my body. My, my belly I love. Firm as, firm as firm and I have all this stuff happening at the front, which I love. I mean, I could have done this and look like everybody else, but I love it because this is where my babies were. Why in your body is it a good place to be? You know, my knees are getting saggy and my bunions are getting bunion-y and... But that's cool. It's my body. It's, it's, it's kind of the visualisation of what's going on inside, I suppose. Yeah. What's going on inside? I'm just getting older and happier. Mm. A bit more accepting. Mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That was really, I, I don't know how this is lo less than, I don't know what you're going to do with this edit, Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, really Thank really you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. It was so incredible. Oh, you guys are amazing. So much wisdom and oh my God. Hi, I'm Elisa. And I'm Lily, and we're the mother-daughter team behind Style Like You. To join the movement for self-acceptance, tune in on Mondays to a new episode of What's Underneath, spread the word to your friends and loved ones, and follow us on social media to learn how you can use your voice to make a difference. It's time to love our bodies, embrace aging, choose substance over fame, and be brave enough to live in our truths.